Hi guys, it's still December 16, 2017. I want to thank subscribers for sending me this information. The Homeland Security, our Department of Homeland Security, is going to be conducting a drill in January and February, and then again in June and July. They're going to be releasing chemicals into the air to simulate a biological terror attack. Yeah. And they claim that the release of these biologicals, well, they're inert, so don't worry. And you can believe your government, you can believe the Department of Homeland Security, because your government will never, ever harm you, right? I will link below to everything. Here is the uh, Department of Homeland Security site. It is a draft environmental assessment for proposed outdoor testing at Chilocco that borders Kansas and Oklahoma, I believe. It is the release of inert chemical and biologicals. The purpose of this study is to gather data that enhances our predictive capabilities in the event of a biological agent attack. Specifically, this work will help in predicting the extent to which an intentional release of a biological agent may penetrate single-family and multi-family structures. These tests will release inert chemicals and biological materials that will be used to measure the amount of material that penetrates the buildings under varied, varied conditions. Now, our government, our military, have been conducting these kinds of drills, exercises, for so many years. You really have to question, how is it that our Department of Homeland Security doesn't know, doesn't know that chemical and biological materials they don't know whether or not it's going to penetrate buildings. There's a petition on change.org, but apparently this petition at the end states, we hope this letter gets to you long before December 8th, 2017. So this was just passed along to me yesterday. Stop chemical testing at Chilaco. Dear Department of Homeland Security, dear, dear, wow, I'd have a hard time addressing a letter, dear Department of Homeland Security, but recently it has come to our attention that you are planning a test of inert chemicals and biological simulant materials at our sacred Chilaco Indian school site. Our children go to school Barely one mile away from Chilaco, we grow the crops in that area that feed our nation. We live our lives in the community. There are churches and elementary school, casinos, and many residential homes in very close proximity to Chilaco. We are extremely concerned about the effects that unknown testing can have on our groundwater and air quality. Do they have cause to be concerned? I think a lot of Americans would say no. No, the Department of Homeland Security would never do something to harm children. They're certainly not going to be doing anything to harm those who live around Chilaco, right? Wrong, very wrong. Secret Cold War tests in St. Louis cause worry. And this was posted 2012. In the mid-1950s, and again a decade later, the Army used motorized blowers atop a low-income housing high-rise at schools and from the backs of station wagons to send a potentially dangerous compound into the already hazy hair in predominantly 
black areas of St. Louis. Local officials were told at the time that the government was testing a smoke screen that could shield St. Louis from aerial observation in case the Russians attacked. But in 1994, the government said the tests were part of a biological weapons program and St. Louis was chosen because it bore some resemblance to Russian cities that the U.S. might attack. The material being sprayed was zinc cadmium sulfide, a fine fluorescent powder. But new research was discovered by a St. Louis Community College uh, sociology professor, Lisa Martino Taylor, and she found that the Army performed radiation testing by mixing radioactive particles with the zinc cadmium cadmium sulfide. Though she concedes there is no direct proof, but her report released uh, in, back in 2012 was troubling enough that both U.S. Senators from Missouri wrote to Army Secretary John McHugh demanding answers. Funny that so many people died of cancer right in that area. The horrifying U.S. government experiments Here's a list, and it's not exhaustive. Project MK Ultra, and I'm not going to read all about the experiments, but if anybody doesn't know about MK Ultra already, well, sorry for the noise, guys, but our military began in, uh, began in the early 1950s to conduct experiments, illegal experiments, on U.S. and Canadian citizens, including children, with the intention of developing drugs and procedures used to interrogate and torture. The program spe specifically focused on breaking down and controlling the mind and incorporated numerous methodologies such as the use of LSD, hypnosis, and sexual abuse, to name a few. Involuntary mustard gas tests on soldiers. During World War II, the U.S. carried out numerous secret tests on U.S. military personnel to determine the effectiveness of various bioweapons, including mustard gas. That was hidden from public until the 1990s when Congress and the Department of Veteran Affairs began to investigate. Yeah, uh, anybody who could enlist in any department in our military is really pretty mind-blowing considering how soldiers, men, women, they're just used as guinea pigs. U.S. grants immunity to monster surgeon, another offense committed by the U.S. government during World War II, was its willingness to condone human torture for advances in biological warfare. So the doctor who was infamous in conducting these tests, we gave him immunity because we were interested in the results of his tests. We have been so unbelievably evil and psychopathic for such a long time. Deadly chemical sprays on American cities. It has been discovered that the government, with the help of the Navy and the CIA, have conducted a series of biochemical warfare simulations on American cities to see how the effects would play out. In 1950, the U.S. Navy, in a simulated biological warfare attack, sprayed San Francisco with large quantities of bacterial pathogens. 
which at the time were considered harmless. Many citizens developed pneumonia as a result, and at least one person died. In 1955, the CIA supposedly released a whooping cough virus on Tampa Bay with boats causing a whooping cough epidemic that claimed the lives of 12. Operation Big Buzz, which was a U.S. military entomological warfare field test conducted in the state of Georgia. The operation was intended to test the feasibility of producing, storing, loading into munitions and dispersing from aircraft the yellow fever mosquito. U.S. infects Guatemalans with STDs. In 2010, the government admitted that it had conducted medical experiments on Guatemalans during the 1940s, in which people were infected with syphilis and other sexually transmitted diseases. They kept a lid on it, making sure that nobody knew about it, and they actively deceived Americans as well as the Guatemalans who had to suffer the consequences of it. Secret human experiments to test the effects of the atomic bomb before dropping the bombs that destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the U.S. scientists secretly tested the bomb's effects on unsuspecting U.S. citizens. Eighteen patients were injected with plutonium. The Holmesburg Program Between 1951 and 1974, University of Pennsylvania professor Albert Kligman was paid by the Dow Chemical Company, the U.S. Army, and Johnson & Johnson to perform experiments on 320 inmates at Holmesburg Prison involving components of Agent Orange that was rubbed on the skin and injected after initial experiments did not obtain desired results, they increased the dosage 468 times the dosage Dow had authorized, causing prisoners to develop acne-like lesions and boils, lupus, psychological damage, as well as a variety of other health problems. This is our government. This is our military. During Vietnam, the use of Agent Orange for biological warfare has resulted to this day many children, Vietnamese children being born with birth defects, deformities, testicular implants at San Quentin Prison for nearly four decades until 1951. Dr. Leo Stanley served as San Quentin's chief surgeon. During this time, he performed a wide variety of experiments on hundreds of inmates, many of which involved testicular implants. Believing he could rejuvenate the elderly, limit criminal behavior, and prevent the reproduction of those deemed unfit to be parents. Stanley's experiments included removing the testicles from executed inmates and inserting them into living inmates. In other experiments, he would implant the testicles of goats, rams, and boars into prisoners as well. When the victim's body rejected the implants, Stanley would then puree the animal's testicles to the consistency of toothpaste and then inject it into the victim's abdomen. Infecting Puerto Rico with cancer. It was discovered in 1931 that under the sponsorship of the Rockefeller Institute, 
Dr. Cornelius Rhodes. Yeah, that Rhodes Scholar. He had infected Puerto Ricans with cancer to supposedly study the effects. And Rhodes' own admi admittance in this note he wrote to a colleague, the Puerto Ricans are the dirtiest, laziest, most degenerate, and thievish race of men ever to inhabit this, this sphere. I have done my best to further the process of extermination by killing off eight and transplanting cancer into several more. All physicians take delight in the abuse and torture of the unfortunate subjects. After the note became public, Rhodes tried to defend himself by saying his comments were written in anger and meant as a joke. In an effort to protect Rhodes and by extension Rockefeller interests, the U.S. government conducted a whitewashing campaign and the scandal was forgotten until 2002. And this guy is put on a pedestal and we look up to all of the Rhodes scholars like Clinton, like Rachel Maddow, such unbelievably sick, in fact, the dirtiest and laziest and most degenerate and thievish are white men. Ow. I'm sure that hurt. The American Association of Cancer Research, who had established the Cornelius P. Rhodes Memorial Award, commissioned a new investigation in 2002, headed by Jake Katz of Yale Law School. Katz was still unable to find evidence of Rhodes's unethical practices due to the government's whitewash campaign. But the American Association of Cancer Research stripped Rhodes if his honor due to his raise decided to strip Rhodes if his honor due to his racism. Okay, um, am I, is my brain just not working and I'm not understanding that or is it written poorly? Okay, cancer patients treated with extreme radiation between 1960 and 1971, whole body radiation experiments were performed on poor African-American cancer patients without their consent. The experiments were funded by the Department of Defense to determine the effects of high levels of radiation on the human body. However, the victims were led to believe they were receiving a treatment for their cancer, fearing repercussions for their immoral practices, one of the doctors, Robert Stone, began to refer to his patients only by their initials. According to him, this was so there will be no means by which the patients can ever connect themselves with the report. During those same years, Another doctor performed full-body radiation experiments on more than 94 African-American cancer patients with funding from the Defense Atomic Support Agency. The consent forms needed to perform the tests were forged, and none of the patients were informed of the risks. Understand this. These kinds of experiments go on all over the world, and who is mostly involved in these experiments? The United States government, the CDC, the pharmaceutical agencies, or companies, the vaccines they inject into children in India, in countries in Africa, in countries in, in Central America, Th this When you really get 
the full picture, then you have to understand that you, you really don't have the full picture. We only have the information that is accessible to us. But when you really do the research on this country and all that it has been involved with and all of those from the start hundreds of years how many people have had to suffer the consequences of all of these sick twisted perverted evil people who care about nothing but their own agendas and what do Americans think that this has stopped all they have to do is look up in the sky and recognize that they're being killed off by all of the aerosol spraying, all of the dumping of chemicals, heavy metals, biologicals, no doubt. During the Cold War, the government conducted literally thousands of radiation experiments on citizens who were poor, sick, and powerless. This included feeding radioactive food to mentally disabled children, inserting radium rods into the noses of school children as well as soldiers releasing radioactive chemicals over US and Canadian towns injecting pregnant women and their babies with radioactive chemicals and irradiating the testicles of prisoners. Operation Midnight Climax a sub-project of MKUltra. The project was ran out of safe houses located in New York and San Francisco where CIA paid prostitutes lured their victims at which point the victims were secretly dosed with a variety of substances including LSD, mind-altering drugs, thermonuclear bomb test fallout, <laughs> Between 1946 and 1962, a number of sites in the Marshall Islands and Pacific Ocean, referred to as the Pacific Proving Grounds, were used by the U.S. government to conduct nuclear testing. Many local residents of other islands were exposed to the fallout, causing radiation sickness, birth defects, and cancer. Of course, the infamous Tuskegee experiments The Tuskegee syphilis experiment began in 1932 during the Great Depression and lasted until 1972. Public Health Service. God, the study focused on the natural progression of untreated syphilis in rural African American men who believed they were being treated for bad, bad blood, 600 men in total were chosen from Macon County, Alabama. And of these men, 399 had contacted syphilis before the study began. 201 did not have the disease. None of the men were informed of their infliction. None were treated with penicillin when it already had become a proven treatment for syphilis. Okay, it, this is not an exhaustive list. So, when you have your Homeland Security conducting a drill, releasing chemicals, biologicals into the air today you really 
need to question what they're going to be releasing. Just because the Department of Homeland Security says that these are inert chemicals and biologicals, inert, oh, don't worry, it's safe. We just want to see how it's going to penetrate through single family and multi-family structures. You have to understand, please get it. Your government is not just a criminal organization. It is an evil criminal organization.